So caution, if you use form 1099 NEC to report sales uh, totaling $5,000 or more of consumer, consumer products, then you are required to file form 1099 NEC with the IRS by January 31st. Form W-2, you must file form W-2 to report payments to your employees, such as wages, tips, and other compensation, and withhold income, social security, and Medicare taxes. So the W-2 is probably the most common form that we know of, but it's still quite complicated. Remember that there's a big difference between doing an employee situation, having to withhold money, process payroll taxes, deal with the 941s, the 940, issuing the W-2 and the W-3, and then just giving someone a 1099 form. It's a lot easier to give someone a 1099 form. <laughs> but but so so keep that in mind. It doesn't mean you don't want to have employees, it just note there's a there's a big you know difference there's pros and cons to, to both of those formats so you can file form w-2 online for more information about form w-2 see the general instructions for form w-2 and w-3 just want to note when you're dealing with payroll if you're thinking about taking on payroll it's a mess and it's it's you know it's not the easiest thing to do uh, so so you want to generally think about how you're going to do that well first meaning do you want to process the payroll through your tax software? Do you want to hire a third party payroll provider to help you process payroll? And I would first talk to someone that is not related to the person you're going to be paying for payroll, such as a CPA firm or something, asking them, what's my best options to deal with payroll? And then set it up properly the first time because uh, problems with payroll is the most likely area that small businesses get sued on and stuff like that. So you wanna make sure that it's set up properly uh, from the get-go if possible, which which a lot of small businesses get hung up on. Okay, so penalties. The law provides for the following penalties if you do not file forms 1099 miscellaneous, uh, forms 1099 NEC or forms W-2. So obviously the question here, as always, is what if I don't? What if I don't do that? Well, then they hit you with the sticks of penalties and interest, right? We're trying to avoid the sticks here. This isn't, it's, just, it's not like we're doing this just because, right? It's not helpful to the business to have to do these things. They're forced to do these things. And why? Because we're trying to, in, we're trying to avoid getting hit with sticks. So, uh, so, or do not correctly report the information. So for more information, you can see the general instructions for certain information returns. So failure to file information returns. Uh, this penalty applies if you do not file information returns by the due date, uh, do not include all required information or report incorrect information. Now, no, you might be asking, well, how would they know if I don't do an information return, right? But, but clearly, if you have a W-2, I mean, if you have like your form schedule, your Schedule C, on your Schedule C, you want to deduct, because these are going to be huge deductions, what you paid either an employee or a contractor. How are you going to do that? Well, if they're an employee, you would probably call it wages or payroll. Now, if you put something on your Schedule C that you deducted like 50,000 of payroll expenses and you don't report W-2 forms, you see, there's a problem. That's why the IRS has a leverage. The IRS can see that you want to deduct the payroll if you want to deduct the payroll, you have to process the payroll and be their tax collector and issue forms W-2. If you have a contractor situation, same thing. You might have paid $50,000 in contractor fees. Where are you going to deduct that? You're going to deduct it as contractor fees or something like that. And then if the IRS sees you've got $50,000 in contractor fees, but you didn't process any 1099 forms, they're probably going to be like, or they could quite likely ask how. That's why the IRS has the leverage, right? Because they're going to see the deductions and therefore they have the leverage. Do you want those deductions? They have the leverage to make you into their tax collector, collector or at least a rat, ratting out who, who you paid. <laughs> Any case, failure to furnish correct payee statements. So this penalty applies if you do not furnish a, require, a required statement to a payee by the required date, do not include all required information or report incorrect information. So then you got the waiver of penalties. No penalty. 
So these penalties will not apply if you can show that the failure was due to reasonable cause and not willful ne neglect. This is often the case in, in law where the question is intent, which is a very difficult thing to, to determine. But if it was just neglect, ah, I didn't do it, I didn't know, then you're gonna have less of a penalty oftentimes than if they say if, if it was intentional uh, and so on. So in addition, there is no penalty for failure to include all required information or for including incorrect information on a de minimis small number for information returns if, if you correct the error by August 1st of the year the returns are due. So meaning a de minimis amount, you were off, you made an error, but it wasn't that big of an error. It's not material in comparison to the total dollar amounts as they determine it and you fix it. So a de minimis number of returns uh, is the greater of 10 or one half of 1% of the total number of returns you are required to file for the year. So that's a pretty small number. 